exciting it would be if we are drinking a glass of water and we can simultaneously see how these water molecules look like. But it is impossible because these molecules are so small that they cannot be seen by naked eye. But fortunately, we have such te techniques that even if we are not able to see these molecules, but we are able to see their images. So let me take you to the fascinating world of uh, spectroscopy where we actually can determine the structure of these minute molecules. Myself, Dr. Mamta Sethi, welcome to S. Chand Academy. To learn more about the details of these topics, please refer to the book by S. Chand Publishing. So let me begin with the uh, the definition of spectroscopy. First and foremost, we need to know what spectroscopy is. So in a very, very, uh, you know, simple way, spectroscopy can be defined as the interaction between the electromagnetic radiation and matter. We all know that the biggest challenge before chemist, physicist, biologist, and in fact, the entire scientific community is to know the structure of atoms and molecules, as in how do they look like? Because with the improved technologies, nowadays, we are synthesizing new materials on everyday basis. And it is important to know the structure of these uh, substances. So, uh, you know, how do we get to know how do they look like at atomic and molecular level? So these molecules are so small that they cannot be seen by their naked eye. But we have such techniques where we can derive the information about their structure using the concept that these, uh, this matter interacts with electromagnetic radiation. So, uh, when electromagnetic radiation falls on any substance, it will either be absorbed or emitted or scattered by that matter. Depending on the absorption and the emission of the electromagnetic radiation, we get to know the uh, information about the structure of these atoms and molecules and uh, this is what we uh, study in spectroscopy. So to be uh, very precise, it basically uh, is a branch of science which deals with the interaction of matter with electromagnetic radiation. And the whole aim or the whole idea of spectroscopy revolves around determining the structure of atoms and molecules. Though it primary, uh, the primary aim of spectroscopy with which it started, uh, you know, is the structural elucidation of atoms and molecules, but it has now extended its application in almost every field of the science. So let us understand, you know, how these spectroscopic transitions takes place. So how do matter interacts with electromagnetic radiation? So I'll come to the uh, details of electromagnetic radiation, uh, maybe a couple of slides later. But let us sit, discuss that, you know, in uh, molecules and in atoms, these energy levels are very well defined. As we can see here, so uh, in terms of uh, quantum mechanics, we can say that these are quantized energy levels. They are not continuous, uh, you know, energy levels, but they are quantized. They, they have a definite gap in between these levels. So now, when this matter absorbs electromagnetic radiation, then what happens? That most of the molecules which are otherwise present in the ground state at room temperature will absorb energy from the electromagnetic radiation and will jump to higher energy levels. 
right? So this ground state is generally represented by E naught and all other states other than ground state, all other states are called as excited states. So when a molecule absorbs energy, it goes to the excited state and this is precisely we call as absorption. Now this absorption is not random. It will not happen under any condition. So the foremost condition when absorption can take place is only when the energy gap, see this gap, this is called as delta E energy gap between two energy levels when this exactly matches with the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation. We can call it when de delta E is exactly equal to H nu, the absorption will take place. So that means in the electromagnetic spectrum, we have energies, frequencies coming from every region. But when this gap will be exactly equal to the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation, absorption will take place and this absorption will be detected as a signal by the spectrophotometer that is a device instrument which we use to record the spectra of any molecule. Uh, it is recorded as an absorptional signal and this is what we call as absorption spectra. Now we all know that other than ground state, all other excited states are relatively unstable. Only the ground state is the most stable state for any molecule. The other higher states are unstable and therefore even if molecule is present in the excited state for some time, it is definitely going to come back to the ground state emitting its energy in terms of photons. So this phenomena we call as emission. So this emission will take place when the molecule in the excited state relax back to the ground state. This is called relaxation or maybe we can call it emission and this particular phenomena is again detected as a signal by the spectrophotometer and this we call as emission spectra. So absorption and emission. Any molecule which goes to the excited state, it is recorded as an absorption but definitely it is going to come back to the ground state in order to acquire the most stable state. So this will be, uh, we will call as emission spectra. So we have understood uh, that what spectroscopy is and how an absorption and emission spectra uh, is obtained. But uh, it becomes mandatory here to understand what electromagnetic radiation is. So though we all have uh, you know learned this uh, uh, thing in school days also that what electromagnetic radiation is. Now electromagnetic radiation is nothing but it is the electric and magnetic field which is traveling perpendicular to each other and also to the direction of the propagation. So this is what this is how we define an electromagnetic radiation. So it has got both electric as well as magnetic component and this electromagnetic radiation plays uh, an important role in spectroscopy and therefore it becomes necessary for us to understand uh, a little more about electromagnetic radiation and its properties which are useful in spectroscopy. So there are a lot many properties but the most fundamental properties which are associated with an electromagnetic radiation are its frequency and its wavelength. So and which are related via this relation which is uh, c is equals to nu lambda where c is your speed of light, nu we call as frequency of light and lambda is the wavelength. 
any electromagnetic radiation is associated with a certain amount of energy which according to Planck is given by E is equals to H nu. We are all well versed with this famous equation which was given by uh, Planck and it was a revolutionary idea of Planck to introduce the concept of quantization which is very much important in spectroscopy otherwise I'll come to that part later otherwise we would have not been able to get a well resolved spectra. So let's see that how frequency is related to the energy. Frequency is directly related to energy with a constant that we call as Planck's constant and its value is 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second. So we can see that frequency is directly proportional to energy whereas frequency and wavelength of any radiation they are related to speed of light via this relation and therefore we can further write this expression of energy as E is equals to hc by lambda. So there are two important things which we need to keep in mind for further discussion uh, of the spectroscopy that uh, frequency and wavelength they are inversely proportional to each other. So as frequency increases the wavelength which is associated with that electromagnetic radiation decreases. Now this plays a vital role in spectroscopy because each electromagnetic radiation will be associated with some energy depending upon the value of this energy we divide this uh, spectrum of energy into various regions. So as you can see that in the first half we have understood the idea of spectroscopy and how a spectrum is obtained. In the next part, I will be talking about various regions of the electromagnetic spectrum and the various types of spectroscopies which are associated with those regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. To learn more about the details of these topics, please refer to the book by S. Chan Publishing. If you like my videos, please like, subscribe and share. And do not forget to press the bell icon for further notifications. All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.